It's July the 17th, 2014, and we are streaming live on Beautiful Girl by Dana. My name is Dana Durnford, and you can find me quite a few days a week live streaming on YouTube for about an hour. Today's topic that we're going to go down extensively, and I think I'm going to make a pretty good case. And by the way, hi everybody. Uh, why Fukushima Reactor 4 spent fuel pool deserves a public earring, you know, because the evidence I'm going to show you is uh, indisputable. It's all from them. Hi, Eric. Uh, Vanislu. Starlight. And just make sure I'm streaming before I get down to screaming. Like you would. What you're looking in the background of me right now is Unit 4. I eat trolls for breakfast. And I pick my teeth with their bones. If I can find any bones after I'm finished with them. That's unit four in the background. Pretty interesting, okay? That's a big hole in a 10-story building. Just before I get down that path, though, I want to mention the sun has hit one of the quietest points in the century. And that was July the 6th, and today was a few days ago. But that does play a, a large role in earthquakes, in adverse conditions, uh, in the Earth's atmosphere, the home nine yards. So when that kicks in again, something could theoretically take place that could shake apart Fukushima's reactors. And as I, you watch the video, I think we'll make a really good case for everybody. Thank you, Victor. Now, a tsunami came in and it inundated that whole site and 500 miles of coastline. It's a very powerful thing. It was felt in Florida 30 minutes later, the earthquake itself. Fukushima had four reactors in particular, Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3, and Unit 4. And it's Reactor 1, Reactor 2, Reactor 3, and Reactor 4. Now, Reactor 4 was empty and the rods were in the fuel pool. And what you're looking at was shortly after and let me see the bottom one is unit one the next one or no the top one in the very top corner up there is unit one the one with the still intact is unit two that's melted down fuel pools caught fire then it's unit three and then the one down here is unit four across now these reactors were not only hemorrhaging into the environment that day it wasn't just a single plume it never stopped coming out of there it's 1440 minutes a day what it's doing to the entire planet can be described as no less than a genocide. Uh, the firemen, the Navy SEALs from Japan, you know, they've done their best. The people that worked on the reactors at Fukushima, they didn't even know if their families survived the tsunami, the earthquake, and everything else. They didn't know uh, where their friends and families were. And they continued to work and sacrifice themselves. And unfortunately, that sacrifice has been mocked uh, by Unit 4's display in the media. I think it's quite revealing what I got here for everybody tonight. Uh, number 4 spent fuel pool cracked from the earthquake. Now, the earthquake was felt in Florida 30 minutes later. you got to think about how it picked up all that land for, say, 800 miles. And it broke buildings after buildings after buildings and cities and everything else right across the country. They rocked these buildings for up to two minutes straight. The buildings are not intended to take these lateral movements. And they can take it for a short period, but they can't take it at a sustained period. You know how things work when you start shaking really bad. At some point, things give out on it, right? This is Unit 4. So you can see the building had a detonation and that it blew up. Right alongside of it was Unit 3, and that also blew up. And Unit 3 is emblematic of a nuclear detonation, and that has been flushed out pretty well in the media. And I don't roll the dice on the things I say. What I do is I research it extensively before I open my uh, narrative up to the public for scrutiny. And that way I don't have the blowback that most people would get because I don't fabricate it, 
I work it out, I don't trust anybody, I constantly research every bit of information and keep it up to speed as much as I can, humanly possible as one person can do. That's to spend fuel pool at Unit 4. Now, I want to remind you that that building blew up. It really truly did. It blew up. Four of those buildings blew up. Now, because they all blew up, they sent they spent uh, sent projectiles through the air, nuclear projectiles, nuclear rods, hundreds of thousands of rods, and there's around 280,000 rods in each reactor. There's around 3,450 bundles in each reactor with 80 rods in each bundle, and each rod is around 18 pounds. And a gram, a single gram, will produce more radioactive uh, elements and particles, and atoms, and isotopes, than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. You have to really digest what I'm trying to say to you and not digest them, even though you did. And no atom is so small that it won't give you cancer that when it comes from a chain reaction from an ionized radi it becomes an ionized radiated element that doesn't exist on the periodic tables. They don't exist in the solar system. And so everything I'm going to tell you tonight is important because reactor 4 had an explosion it has several explosions but one in particular uh, they made note of on the 20th 2012 and it had two fires in March 2011 that was just that one headline we're looking at there okay now two the left and the right are the official stories one is a busted up building and the other one is a mint absolutely gorgeous untouched building now you got to realize how devastating the detonations were. These weren't no tiny itty bitty detonation. Uh, just one second, uh, slippery pixel. Thank you, Vanislu. I have a hard time with that. Thank you, Bix. Double O Seven. You're very kind. MSVS. Victory. And believe me, folks, I'm just doing what you would do if you had the opportunity that I had. Right, I took my platform and I used it for this because I already had a platform put together. And what I'm going to play for you, CBS, and I'm going to go down this line for you now. Now CBS, now here they're, they're saying they're inside Unit 4. This is really important. Here we go. The heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the taking place here in Reactor 4. Does that building resemble a building that he's in? So that's the first law. Here's another law. End of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest X-ray. So he received less than a chest X-ray. You can't do that, see? A chest, if you ingest a particle, and that's what he done there, if he was actually there, but he wasn't, they're not the same buildings. So he's up on CB. I know there's a bit of feedback. I'm not sure what's that all about. I'll turn that down a little tiny bit. Maybe that'll help if there's a problem for anybody. That's the pool, fuel pool. You can't get in there and liberate the fuel rods without blowing the place up. You can't get in there and liberate the fuel rods with a human. You can't get in there with a robot. You can't get into Chernobyl. You can't get in any of these reactors. So how was it that they got in there, like he's claiming, and turned everything into Molly Maid? How come they didn't do that at all the other buildings, and why Why don't we see pictures of the cutting torches? Why don't we see pictures of the scaffolding? Why don't we hear from the contractors who went in there and done it? And because the site is full of homeless, and they don't, can't even read or write or let create something like that. What you're looking at there is not Unit 4 on the right-hand side even though they're both official pictures, right, the detonation is way so obvious for, um, hang on, here's another shot of the building. Now how can you get a perfect building? How did he get inside that building when nobody else can get in there? When nobody else can get in there, they want to put a sarcophagus over for a couple of hundred years and try to, to get robots that can get in there then. Yet they're claiming they're in there. And so, we got up here first. Uh, 
here's a story for you. April the 15th, 2011. I still got my little halo. It's daylight. Nuclear expert iodine 131 and number four pulse suggest that the spent fuel pulse started its own chain reaction. So how could Seth Dorn from CBS get in there if there was a chain reaction? How could anybody else get in there and clean it all up? After the detonations, you know, the rods were all over the site. The entire site is full of uh, ionized radiated gammas and betas and alphas and the chunks that exploded and detonated are also putting out the x-rays and the neutrons. This is extraordinarily one of the dangerous, not one of the dangerous, the most dangerous spot on the planet till the end of time. It will never stop hemorrhaging into our environment till the end of the time. But look at us. Look at it. Take a really good look at that. Here's another headline for you. Renewed nuclear chain reaction feared at the spent fuel pool. Now they're talking about Unit 4. And you can look up these headlines, March the 20th, 2011. So how can you have a big building totally destroyed, yet a perfectly intact building inside of it? These buildings are not magic, okay? They're not created with some voodoo where nothing can damage them. They're no different than any other building on the planet. Here's another headline for you. March the 18th, 2011. We got a little bit of distortion there. Let me see if I move closer. Will it give it up? No. Because it's. I got to put another light right here and we get that up this afternoon when everybody shows up and finishes work here. So, exposed radiation streaming into the atmosphere after number four, fuel pool boils dry. That's March the 18th, 2011. This is another devastation. This is an absolute, you can never get in the building again, but yet the heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end of our tour, we were checked for... So, like, how is that possible that he's in there and nobody else can get in there? See, the, the, the structure you're looking at, that structure, doesn't touch the building. Because they're afraid it's going to crumble. So how could you get in there and remove fuel rods? It doesn't have the crane up in that structure. Hang on. Now here's a picture when the Fukushima 50 went in on the fifth floor of reactor four. The building is destroyed. That's an inside shot. You, like the people going through there, that's the Fukushima 50. They're all probably dead from radiation poisoning, radiation sickness. If you stayed there for an hour, your organs would melt. So they went in, they got pictures, and we see the same pictures forever and ever and ever. Now this structure, you can see the gap even they got there. Unit 4, that building doesn't touch it. And in the future, they're going to put the crane in that reactor, or in that, uh, that, that was built with cranes. They picked the pieces up and laid them in. There's no one there with a, with a wrench in their hand. I used to actually do that job where I used to lean out on 15, 20-story buildings, with a 9 16 inch wrench in my hand and they would, you know, the big cranes would lift up these big panels and my job was to, to put a couple of nuts in it. And I used to have the engineer hanging on to me. No safety harnesses on, no nothing. And so I know a thing or two about that. That's a long time ago, mind you, but it was a fun job because it didn't get any more crazier than what I was doing all day for a living, trust me. You think the steel walkers were crazy. You, you should have a load of what I was doing. This is Unit 4. Look at the damage. This was a 10-story building. 10 stories. It detonated. Uh, once again, let me show you what a detonation means. You have to imagine, if your house done that, what would your house look like? If your office building done that, what would your office building look like? If your stadium at a hockey game done that, what would that stadium look like? right? You can't allow them to get this upper hand on you and trick you and deceive you what they're, with, with this propaganda machine. Look at what they've done. It doesn't touch the other building and there's no crane inside of it. They haven't put a crane in there yet and even if they do, they're still not going to touch the other building. They can't touch the building. It's a fable like Seth Dorn from CBS uh, pulled on you. 
So 100% of releases from the unit number four spent fuel pool assumed in the NRC analyst. And I forgot to put the links below, but after the video, you'll find links below to a couple of million emails from the NRC, from TEPCO, the official site. And you'll find a couple of thousand of these pictures. You can download them from TEPCO. I don't make stuff up, okay? And just a quick note, unit three, right alongside of unit four, that's unit four to the right and unit two to the left. All of these are 100% melt, meltdowns and the fuel pools are meltdown, but unit three is missing. It's a total integrity, the building, the fuel pools, the reactor cores were rejected all over those buildings, all around that site. In the detonations, right? Don't forget the detonations. So when Seth CBS in four was in that I building, received the equivalent of less than a chest X-ray. How did he do that? Part of the and why did he do some investigative taking journalism? place here in Reactor 4? At the end of our tour... I'm sorry, that video wasn't supposed to play. That was supposed to be a picture that I stuck up in that corner that time. I smurfed up. I kept. I don't know if my audio was on or not. Because I haven't got the headphones in because there's an echo. There's a delay and I can't get rid of it, even though I got the full version. So TEPCO going into the ocean. I just want to give you a quick understanding of this. It's 50 square miles a day. And it's about a thousand pounds a minute, a thousand gallons a minute of radioactive dye that doesn't dissipate for, just imagine if it was dye, and it didn't, didn't dissipate for hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands and millions and billions of years, depending on the radioactive elements and isotopes and atoms and particles. Well, there's about 1.8 million square miles came, came out of there. It takes about 130 days to get across the ocean, and every day behind that was another 400 to 800 ton plume, another 1,440 plumes. There's a plume like St. Paddy's Day every minute. But I got some good stuff for you. Let's keep moving. New TEPCO report, Unit 4 had a major impulsive sound. Gee, I wonder what that was. And then damage to the roof. Gee, I wonder what that was. And fires were seen hours later. Gee, I wonder what that was. On June the 20th, 2012, they fessed up a little bit on that one. But we got some interesting stuff coming up yet. Explosion heard heavily damaged, near heavily damaged number four reactor, the 31st, 2011. And, you know, just for your own peace of mind, this is what they mean when they say the words heavily damaged reactor. Will you agree with me and say that that's heavily damaged? Will you say, Dana, yeah, you know, Dana, you're probably right. It's got a lot of little issues. I don't know, Dana. Maybe you got in there with Molly Maid. You can get it all shiny and it'll look real pretty, right? No, of course not. You can't get from there to there without, <laughs> you know, if they were able to go in and clean it all up, if they were able to go in there and get Molly Maid to spit shine everything, if they were able to go in there and set up all of that, do you think for one second that CBS wouldn't have a documentary on how they pulled it off? Didn't you think for one second that the homeless are capable of pulling that off? Because that's who's down there, right? It's nothing but the homeless. Look inside of the building. How did you get to that from that with homeless and you can't even get inside the building? How could you even pull that one off? You just can't see. Uh, and flames were sighted deep within the number four unit uh, fuel pool it was the second fire in 24 hours. That was December the 2nd, 2012, that story came out. To put it into perspective, this is what the fuel pool looked like, and now they say it looks like this. So how could they get from there, or get to there from here? You couldn't, you can't. If you could, you know, why are you building all these robots? Why is there all that money going into the industry why not just pick up a few hundred homeless and send them in there? Obviously, they're more talented than all the engineers and all the architectures on the planet put together because they pulled off something that nobody knows how they done it. There's no footage to prove it was done. There's no cutting torches or scaffolds or construction workers to prove anything happened. It's just, um, it's a conjecture in the media and I'm getting to that point. I dine 121, 131. 
in number four spent fuel pool at 22,000 times above normal. There is such, no such thing as normal. That's a man-made element. That doesn't exist in the solar system. Or created, it's not created by the sun, iodine 131. And that's something you heard a lot. That's a very short life, eight days. At the same time, there's 10 times as much as iodine 132. There's uh, 30 times more iodine 133. There's just as much cesium 137. And there's 100 times more strontium 90. These are very long life, very hard, very fast acting radioactive ionized carcinogenic. The most extreme carcinogenic thing on the planet is one ten thousand of a million of a meter. It's so tiny. It's smaller than the dust particles you see floating around your ear after you clean your house. But I can assure you, this is the official pictures of Unit 4. That's the official picture. It got sprayed with radioactive material. Do you know why those people wear those weird uniforms when they're just doing basic stuff? Because, you know, if you were able to go in and clean it up like Molly made, the other units wouldn't be an issue. We would have had it all done a long time ago, and there'd be a wonderful documentaries on how we solved the issue. But we haven't. We can't. There is no technology on the planet that can deal with it. There's no robot on the planet that can survive in the environment for more than an hour or two hours at best. There's nothing on the planet that can contain these radioactive elements. They're not supposed to be on our planet. And so these, even the most tiniest one will give you a cancer. Here's another headline. The Fukushima Daiichi. Now it wasn't just the Daiichi uh, nuclear production facility, this weaponized facility, and they also produce uh, it's, it's the military industrial complexes, directed energy weapons, isotope production facilities too. They, they need these, these isotopes, these wicked, horrible things, not for power. No, you don't make these crazy, wicked things for power, unless you're talking about directed energy weapons. The more wicked and crazy, the more noxic and toxic the fuels are, like the, the, the MOX fuel in the Reactor 3. And Reactor 3, once again, had MOX fuel. That's two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. But when it goes to the chain reaction, it becomes a couple of million times worse again. So it was 18 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet before they even started the chain reaction. 18 million times worse, rather, than Chernobyl. Chernobyl is one-third the size. Well, Chernobyl's bigger than that one now. That one's missing. But Chernobyl was one-third the size in reactors, and it was a 30% meltdown. 3,500 square miles evacuated permanently. Let me keep going because there's we're on a schedule and we got to squeeze through this stuff. Um, now the NRC March email says the wall of unit four spent fuel pools have collapsed and there is no water in there. There is no water in there, so the zirconium cladding had melted and become pyroplastic, cut fire, uh, like the headlines I was showing you earlier. And you know it, it's missing. The spent fuel pool for number four actually doesn't exist. That's my my educated opinion, and that I back up with facts is that it doesn't exist. It can't exist because it burnt, right? It had massive releases repeatedly till it was all gone. And anything that was left there had melted down. It went into a chain reaction, and it went down to the building. That's what really happened, there. and that's what are faking the pictures of it. Have a look at it. Look at it. Do you think that everything is hunky-dory inside of there like CBS was showing you? And we're almost up to the good stuff here. We're almost up to the good stuff. Extremely radioactive tunnels at Fukushima must be drained. Now, Fukushima has tunnels underneath it connecting all the buildings, and they all snapped their backs during the earthquake. And the earthquake went right across the country. It picked up buildings, you know, hundreds of miles away from Fukushima, let alone what it done to Fukushima. It's like a blanket went through the country. And all these buildings and, and the countryside were picked up and displaced from their normal uh, geographic proportions. Right? There was a huge drop in the height of the coastline because of that earthquake. The tunnels under the Fukushima plant uh, are suspected to have the quake damage. And there's no suspect about it. They can't get in because it's so radioactive. But over 15,000 tons of extraordinary radioactive material because the fissionable product ended up leaching into that environment. 
So if I took a, a gallon of that, sprayed it around this building, you would have to evacuate the entire, uh, you know, like a quarter mile around me permanently. You would radiate that. That's how bad that stuff really truly is. Uh, government memo. One or more of the building's explosions ejected radioactive material around the site of Fukushima. One or more of the buildings. They all did it, except for Yona 2. But it's so radioactive you can never get in there for about a thousand years if you actually look at how that works. And the cores at all three of the plants, and this was a good one, March the 31st, 2012, melted down, breaching their containment vessel. And but TEPCO maintains the fuel stop short of breaching the containment vessels. But now we know better. And they knew, they knew in five days how bad this was. They knew Fukushima released more than Fukushima Chernobyl in the first day. And that was just calculated on Unit 1, not Unit 3, not Unit 4, which are devastating on their own. The nuclear industry is a genocide. It's a 100% genocide. All nuclear plants have spent fuel pools. All nuclear plants boil a million gallons of water. But all nuclear plants, uh, a, a different type of boiling is the fuel pools boil off 120,000 liters of radioactive materials into your community every day because you take the fuels out of the reactors and you have to keep them in spent fuel pools around the site and they have to keep pouring water 120,000 liters a day on each of these pools and they must say you know the, the pools are boiling off radioactive material into your community what you see coming out of these big stacks is radioactive material going into your environment it's the, the, probably the worst betrayal imaginable and they build these things in your community. And just to touch on a couple other things while I'm at it, Fukushima has uh, just, I can't remember, 25 billion tons of not just radioactive contamination from the detonations and the tsunami lugging it all over the site that they're, they're grinding up and burning in the incinerators around the prefectures, make sure everybody gets their doses, but the septic system all the septics uh, facilities have stacks, bags and bags of processed uh, human waste that is so radiated they can't use it for anything. And the stacks goes like miles down the road from these plants all over the country. People that are using the bathroom, the food they're eating and the stuff they're drinking is also going back down into the system because you can't uh, accumulate everything. And that stuff is accumulative. It's not like a banana, where a banana is potassium-40. It's harmless. And if you eat it, you have potassium-40 in your body, but you can't get any more, and it's known as homeostasis, and so you'll off-gas that. I just wanted to put that out there for perspective for everybody. So how can you have a perfect f fuel pool, perfect fuel pool over here, and then the one above me is the same building? You can't have that. These detonations were just incredible, unimaginable proportions, just utterly devastating. These buildings, like the right, like you can see the beams, you can actually get up there and park an SUV on those beams. That's how wide those beams are. That's how big of a load that building was carrying. It was utterly devastated. But BBC came out and showed you this fake fuel pool. BBC came out and showed you this fake they never even bothered to try to investigate it. Are you kidding me? They knew what they were doing. They faked it and they shoved it down your throat, right? That's what they done. CBC in Canada done the same thing. They faked it. You see the pictures up in the top? That's from down the article. I, got the, I put the bananas in behind me because that's what these idiots are implying, how dangerous it is. But if you eat a banana, you off-gas it. If you eat any of that stuff, you accumulate it. It's like getting an x-ray 1,440 minutes a day or 7.8 million x-rays uh, over 15 years. So CBC came out with the same story and the same pictures and didn't bother to show any context. A Japanese doctor today came out and said, Tokyo should no longer be inhabited. Tokyo should no longer be inhabited, just like North America for that matter. But Tokyo should no longer be inhabited. That's a model above me from NOAA, the American government's model, for 40 days of 
a cesium-137 dispersal just from the unit one reactor at Fukushima Daiichi military industrial complexes directed energy weapons production facility. They need isotopes. You know, the doctor is, is, as this is finally coming out, you know, the doctors are saying the country is destroyed. He had to leave there. Everybody he meets, everybody he sees has radiation sickness. I've covered it so extensive on, my, on this site of from one end of Japan to the other end of Japan, prefecture by prefecture, and I took my time. It took, I can't remember how long it took, but I, I included everything. It's, it's unimaginable radiation, amounts of radiation in all the estuaries and all the rivers and all the drinking waters and all the prefectures and all the playgrounds and all the schools, all the malls and shopping centers, all the public parks, uh, the entire coastline, the entire country is radiated. It's a genocide against these people, their own government, in the hopes they can get a pension out of it. Now, he published a paper, you know, why did he leave Japan to my fellow doctors. I, I closed a clinic in March 2014 since his father's because he had to leave there. He just, you know, there's so much radiation. Now, what he's saying is 1,000 to 4,000. That's still frightening. But I got the real numbers, the actual two numbers collected from over the years, and I, I'll cover it again many times over. But RT showed you a fake building. RT showed you that fake fuel pool. RT, of all the people who's supposed to be, was it say at the top of the page, question more? They never even tried. I inserted those pictures above me. So you can see context of what they're saying. It, look, it looks good on the inside, but look at the outside. And you got pictures of the drones from the inside. And so RT never even bothered to fact check. You know, RT never bothered to say, uh, let me find you a clear picture that, you know, hey, look, it actually looks like that, and I don't know how they've done it, but they're saying that it looks like that. So they never even tried. And then, um, who the hell is this one? Uh, the NPS, I lost track. Oh, this is TEPCO. So here's TEPCO showing the interior unit for fuel pool, saying that's it. And then they show you that structure, but you'll see them in the comments section, that's a, they'll say that's a support structure. It doesn't touch the building, right? The bottom left, my, you know, um, well, it's my right actually, isn't it? Because I'm looking backwards at my screen, I guess. And so TEPCO uh, has disseminated these pictures. Now, these pictures have shown up all over the internet, and all the media is using it and running with it. Uh, James Colbert, who I've called out before, the Colbert Report, and he's got Fukushima update. He's propagating that out there. And it's like, I don't trust that person no more. I've seen what he's done on that site. <clears throat> the motherboard and voice, which is part of motherboard, or motherboard is part of voice, they put out unit four. They're supposed to be investigative journalists. They're supposed to go where nobody else goes. They're supposed to go do what nobody else will do. Like all the other journalists I just showed you. And they didn't. They didn't even try. Here's a good picture of the structure, right? They lay it in with cranes and they lay other chunks on top of them. They fit over. They fit over. They fit over. Oh, I gotta, we're going to have a bigger screen and I'll be able to reach right up hopefully uh, soon. Uh, but anyway, this is just meant to hide what's going on and they can't get inside that building or they wouldn't build that thing. See? You know what I mean? They can't get in there to do anything, everything is destroyed in there. It's destroyed in there. It's not the fantasy world that you, you keep getting for fed. radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest egg. Right, when you ingest a radioactive particle, by the way, you get an x-ray every minute for your entire life. Your body attacks it and it builds a sarcophagus and we call that a tumor, okay? And we're winding down. Uh, the background, you can see unit four. Does that look like it's all hunky-dory? Here's another picture for you. Can you conceive what you're looking at is hunky-dory? It's all fine. They're going to take their time. Seth was in there wandering around. He was, uh, they were probably in there break dancing before the camera went off, made cracking jokes, and then they went live and told you that story. But they're inside of this building. 
what do you see in front of you? If I said, here, I'm going to sell you that, I want top dollar, and you'd be like, I can't fix it. It's full of radioactive material, Dana. You know, why are you trying to sell me that? No, no, it's fine. Just give me your money, and you'll see. Everybody will tell you it's fine. But when you get there, you find out it's not fine. <clears throat> do you think I want to make this video and be out here doing this? Do you think I want to do all this work today? I never stopped since I woke up this morning putting this together. And I decided to go live so I wouldn't lose track of it. Because if I wait for a few hours, I'll start losing track of what I'm doing. And I just keep going, keep going. Look, look at the building. You know, that's unit four. You can't have both of it, okay? You can't have both of it. The heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation. He's saying he's inside of Unit 4. Now this is a drum picture of the fuel pool allegedly inside of Unit 4, just after the accident. And if you look really close in the bottom right hand, left hand corner, right hand corner, you'll see that is dry. That's dry as a bone. That's dry as a bone. The building is annihilated. There's nothing left. It's totally cannibalized. Just like all the other buildings there. They built a lie and a fable to suck you away from everything else that's happening. To suck you away from the story of the ocean. From the fact that there's 50 square miles a day for over 1,200 days going into the ocean. Like, I'm not making the video because I'm, I have an agenda in the sense of I'm politically connected or I, I'm a blogger for the major media. I got a halo nuclear explosion over my head right now. I'm doing this because they're lying. I'm doing this because that's the evidence. I'm doing that because all this information conflicts, and yet it's all official. It's all official stories. It's all the official information. It's all the official headlines. It's all from the people that you want to trust. And, but when you put it together in its right context and you end up with the story I gave you, yeah, then you can see why it's nothing but a big fable and a big lie and why we have to be concerned because they're hiding the genocide. They're hiding what's going to happen. And this is not one of those stories that is going to have a happy ending where somebody comes up and says, oh, now nah, we're actually, we fixed it all. That can't happen. We don't have that technology. Your institutions, your professors, your academics in the nuclear industry have all lied to you their entire life. They've lied to their friends, their families, their parents, their loved ones, their associates in the real world, their children. By telling them that a banana is equal to man-made radioactive material, by telling them that a potato chip is no dangerous, is more dangerous, or a banana is more dangerous than the radiation, radiation from man-made uh, fallout, or that walking in the sunshine is somehow equated with man-made radioactive elements, you know, or chest x-rays, or the natural uranium in the seawater like Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution mass murderers are out there doing for three years. You know, I research and I research and I research and over the years, I've never come across a story like Fukushima. I've never come across a story where all the media has access to the same information but can't tell the truth, can't even do a little tiny bit of fact-checking and say, hey, you know, a banana's got nothing to do with a 12-foot fuel rod and that I'm not going to put that in my article. If we could just find a single journalist out there who would challenge their narrative, they would get fired. But if they come out and tell their story of why they got fired, they would be the most popular person on the planet. If they were to write a book about it, they would make billions because they told the truth. There's no one out there uh, willing to tell the truth. And that's why I got to exist. I don't want to be here. I truly don't want to be doing what I'm doing. I really, I really resent having to do what I'm doing. I have a hate on now for nuclear scientists, nuclear professors, nuclear academics, nuclear and universities that host these uh, hideous, malicious, lying machines. Somebody has to pick this up. Somebody's going to have to carry this information. All I can do is put it together and put it out there. But if the, if, if the, the alternative media is not going to help me, what does that tell you about the alternative media? 
if the alternative media is going to put it out there with no remorse and ignore the real narrative, you know, they need, they need to gut up. This has taken the good out of me. This has destroyed every aspect of my life to get this story and put it together for people so I wouldn't have to do it anymore so the story could find its way out there so they would have a starting point. And the entire network out there has failed me of alternative media. It's the hounds of Fukushima and the Fukushima hounds, the people under my video, the people on my video, the people that are supporting each other and that I support. You know, if I could find more, I would. If I, if I can find more, uh, you know, I, I would have uh, be encouraged. I don't find that. I don't find the, the lucid debate, the lucid conversation. I don't find the professors or the academics that I can put my fate in. I don't find a journalist like Motherboard or Voice or RT or CBS or anybody or CBC or BBC like I showed you. They didn't even bother to fact check. I don't know what to do anymore. I'll keep doing what I'm doing to the, to the best of my ability. And you know, I'm, I can do that much, but it's not right. It's not right. They should be able to do it. They would, I shouldn't have to do this every day. If they all carried this video, I wouldn't have to do this anymore. Right, but he won't, and I will have to do this more, and that's just the way it is. Okay, folks, it was an early stream for everybody. Forty-one minutes, we kept it tight. Hugs for everybody. MSVS, Candace, Dapman. We got Hiroshio, Bill, Candace, Victory. Let me say hi to a few people for a second. I guess before I get off here, make sure I say good night. Get up before it gets starlight. So we're yelling, folks. Lunar, hi. Biggs, 007. And did I miss anybody? Because I just, it was an early show today. Vanislu, Mom's the Word, and everybody else. I might get another one out tonight. I tried Google yesterday. I tried Google this morning, too. And I'd rather get all my teeth pulled out live on YouTube with no anesthetic than do that for another couple of days. That was just too much. It's not meant to be used, I guess. There was nothing easy about it. I got the wire cast and poured it into it. It was easier than trying to use it. How weird was that? And I'll give it another go in a few days. If it figures it out, then I'll put up a little tiny video on this site, Beautiful Girl by Dana, and it'll be an invite for the next hour when that shows up, and, and you'll have a link below to come over and join the stream and see if I can get some kinks out of it. So if anybody wants to join that, That'll be tomorrow next day. You'll see the video show up here, and I'll, I'll leave it open for a few hours, and I'll keep my eye out for anybody who wants to join it and see if I can get the kinks out so I can do interviews. Um, and we'll catch everybody later. Take care, folks.